All Access Indy, the 500, Speedway Today, presented by Donato's. Every piece is important. And by Chernoff Cosmetic Surgery. Here we go. We're now less than two days away from the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500, the field of 33, out on the track this afternoon for the final time before Sunday's race. Sports Director Anthony Calhoun joining us now live from IMS with the very latest from an interesting carb day, sir. Yeah, hey, good evening to you, Phil. You're right about that. It was very interesting today here for those 33 drivers. They know the deal coming in today. Final practice before they go racing on Sunday. Mother Nature trying to play some games here today with the drivers. Got off to a late start. Was supposed to start around 11 o'clock. Instead, it went at 1, and they were on the track for 90 minutes. But the story of the day involved a, a scary moment here during practice. 25 minutes left to go in practice and involving one of the young drivers here. Colton Herter here. My goodness, loses control in turn one. You see it there. He hits the wall. Take another look at this again. He flips upside down here. Now, the good news, he would be okay, but we've seen time and time again drivers during the month that may have problems here in turn number one. Trouble there, flips over there. Thank goodness for the arrow screen there protecting him in turn one. So he's going to start 25th coming up on Sunday. We had a chance to catch up with Herta after that crash, and here's his take on what happened. That's like the worst feeling as a driver, just having to hang there upside down. So it was nice that, that they were able to get there super fast and roll me back over. I'm fine, though. I wish that, you know, we, we had T cars like back in the day that were ready to drive because I would be fine with going right back out there. Um, Physically, I'm fine. Mentally, I'm fine. Um, but yeah, it sucks. The car's destroyed. Man, a scary moment there for Colton Herter. We can tell you this tonight. He's got some good news here, though, not only just walking away, but they do have a backup car. So good news there for his team. So his car will be ready to go. He will still qualify as far as being that 25th position for the 106th running of the Indy 500 as he gets ready for his fourth appearance here at the 500. Coming up a little bit later on Speedway today, much more action here from Carb Day. There was another crash that took place as well during Carb Day. We'll tell you who was involved with that and more coming up a little bit later here on News 8 at 5. That's it from here. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. And the party is getting underway in the streets of Speedway. Let's go ahead and bring in News 8's Garrett Burquist. He's out there to show us how everyone's rocking on Main. Garrett, this is your first time. How's it going out there? Yeah. Oh, first time covering it at least, and so far it's uh, getting quite busy. People are starting to arrive. You can see we've got a kids zone set up over here. We've got the uh, bounce house and a bunch of games for the kiddos. Uh, everything just kicked off within the last few minutes. This will be open for a couple of hours this evening, but the neighbors here in Speedway have already been partying all day. I put it back on this morning and smoked it in the butcher's paper for about three hours. Carb Day cookouts are a family tradition for Scott Kelly. Not missed a race since 1979. Rick Mears won then, and my daughter's had this house here six years, I believe. And we've met, met here Carb Day and Race Day for six years here. Someone needs to draw a race car. Every year, family and friends gather at this home just a few hundred yards from the track, like his other daughter, Erin, and granddaughter, Lenny. We get ready in the mornings, we get our food ready, and we come over here, and we just, we start early, and we hang out here all day. Scott's pulled pork recipe keeps them coming back. That's a special rub that I use on her, but it's, it's, got a, it's got a lot of mustard seed, a lot of garlic, salt and pepper. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to put some with, uh, some with some barbecue sauce and some plain. So do the race day traditions and seeing their friends again. There are so many ways to make month of May memories, but sometimes the best moments are in your own backyard. The rest of the day, we'll just... <laughs> You're playing with my microphone. We'll just hang out, have some drinks, listen to some music and eat and just enjoy the day. 
So the first live band is going to start in about 30 minutes or so. The band is Barbender. Now, once again, this kids zone will be open until 7 o'clock. The festivities here on Main Street go until 10 o'clock tonight. Live in Speedway, Garrett Bergquist, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook. Gary, thank you very much. We continue our coverage now from the track with Richard Essex, uh, and we asked him to go out to the track and find the unusual and somewhat weird behavior that is only acceptable at the track, Richard, and I'm sure you were able to do that, sir. Well, Phil, you know that this is probably the only place, at least in Indiana, maybe in North America, where it's acceptable to walk in here at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning with a cooler fill of be filled with beer and to have yourself drug out of here about this time in the afternoon. Now, I've been coming out of the Speedway since the 1970s. I can tell you, I found a couple different groups. You got these guys from the south side. They, these guys are almost what I would call serious fans. Then we've got another segment of, of people that are out here, families, out here enjoying the day. These are your, these are race fans. But there are, in between these two groups, is a whole nother group of people. With a flip of his hair, you could tell Scott Taylor is a serious race fan. He and six of his buddies try to be at the race almost every year. This year, Taylor let his hair out, so to speak. Special haircut, the mullet, which he grew just for the race, and he styled it himself yesterday. Yesterday, myself with some scissors. What caught our attention with these guys is their wagon. Six cases of beer packed into coolers and strapped down to a wagon for safe transport. They have 144 beers for seven guys, and they aren't sure if that's going to be enough to get through the day. Definitely it's raining if we watch it rain. Carb Day attracts four distinct crowds. The real race fan, which are the sober people. The casual fan, which is a few beers and then home. Oh, baby, Carb Day 2022, let's go. And the serious fan, drunk by noon and willing to say just about anything to a TV crew. <laughs> Shotgun the beer at five in the morning. I didn't throw up, so... I'm not sure what category of race fans these guys fall into. They are certainly training for the upper echelon of fans with a made-for-TV quick beer shotgun. Down the third turn is where you will find the most serious of race fans. They are not here for the call. We have a little test of their devotion to racing with one simple question. Where is the track? Where's the track? Right there. All the way around. All the way around. All the way around. In the middle of this huge crowd, we found a guy that could be the ultimate fan. The guy in the red hat with a long white beard. He didn't offer a name, but he did offer a glimpse into the groove of a race fan that is out here having the time of his life. As Wish TV has been telling you all week, there's going to be an enormous police presence out here. And I've been coming out here for a number of years, and I've never seen as many police officers out here, particularly on Carb Day, as I've seen today. But we also can tell you that, for the most part, even though this has been one of the bigger crowds, been one of the more spirited crowds that we've had out here at the Speedway, there hasn't been a lot of trouble out here. Everybody seems to be, at least for now, behaving themselves. From the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Richard Essex, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook. Ooh, Richard. Amazing. We'd love to see you out there. Hey, it's expected to be a hot day on the track on Sunday, but it hasn't always shaped up that way. Storm Track 8's Tara Hastings has a look back at years past. Hey, Tara. Hey, Alexis. Yeah, we've had uh, some wide variety of weather extremes uh, throughout the 100-plus years of the Indy 500. The hottest, 92 degrees in 1937. Most recently, 91 in 2018 and several years where we've had temperatures into the 90s. It's important to note that usually, of course, we always have the race in May. It's never been run in June, despite some several postponements due to rain. Uh, but in August, we had the race due to the pandemic in 2020. It was 87 degrees, making it into the top 20 warmest Indy 500s. The coldest, 58 in 1992. That was a, a rough year where several accidents were happening on the track due to the uh, colder temperatures out there. Uh, and rain-shortened races, a few here. The most recent, 2007, where we only got in 166 laps. We did get 180 laps in in 2004. And that year, that day, 3.8 inches of rainfall. So quite the weather extremes here over the last 100 years.